Welcome back to Hard West. We are on our ring to finish scenario number four, and we're at Lars Fortuna's commercial post. It is time to um, have the final standoff. Cassandra and her crew politely um, move over to the island. And during the sea voyage, Cassandra uh, felt feeble and anxious. The feeling she is attributed to the excitement of meeting the protector. Finally, she could be um, rid of her curse of clairvoyance. Still, she was uneasy. She chased away those thoughts and did her best to enjoy the trip. As soon as uh, they stepped off the boat, Cassandra realized she should have trusted her uneasy feeling. They were immediately uh, apprehended by thugs when the protector arrived. He appraised Cassandra like a caged animal. Uh, then he made a show of presenting a bag full of gold pieces to Harden. Cassandra never uh, seemed so smug before. He immediately departed uh, for his return voyage. Then the protector had Cassandra and her companions locked up in the brig, promising to deal with each of them individually. Shit, and he was our best... Um, he was our best uh, man by a long margin. Oh my god, we got tricked. Sandra is taking over the sniper position. Our good friend, um, our good friend Paco here will take over this, uh, the, will take over uh, the normal frontline damage. And yeah, we got Jim. I mean, what's, what's not to love about Jim, right? Uh, well, let's give him the six, six damage rifle, just in case we're running into into a scenario where we need it. Um, take some extra healing, just in case. Everyone has a relic, and now we're opening the cards because we need to reassign them. Gosh, I'm angry about that. So Paco is taking over Cassandra's role. Now having 12 hit points and being this massive grunt in the front line. Xandra, on the other hand, is going to be the sniper here. With 5 hit points. We're going to give her extra hit points plus the full house oh, that's fine so cassandra seven hit points Paco 12 uh, which le leaves jim with a with a meager uh, five hit points but he at least can take some cards i think the three kings will offer him uh, the option to face off barrage is a good skill um and that's also plus 30 maximum luck. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we've dealt, uh, dealt all of our cards. Got a lot of extra luck, 130 luck, 160 luck, 150 luck. That's good because we're not easily being uh, hit. Cassandra on top of it has 25 defense and can hide uh, behind. Has a couple of extra shots. So, well, it's going to be interesting. All the effort Cassandra put into getting her here has repaid with treachery and cruelty. She swore she would give them what they deserved. Interestingly enough, Peko, uh, the fat Mexican, has stayed Harden with us. and the protector both proved to be traitors. The latter wanted to experiment on Cassandra to see what made her tick. 
Wait a second, Pekor is a traitor as well? The lock on her cell door was easily picked with a hairpin. But the guards were on high alert. If they saw her loose, they would shoot to kill. Cassandra's companions were here as well. She could free them. Find the keys to the cells in the guard room. Well, where's that? Oh, in the guard room downstairs. Interesting. Well. So, let's see how well this guy here is going to be subdued. Well, he's about to attack, but it's not good. Come on. Oh, there is yet another, there is yet another guard. Maybe we should have just taken a shot. Sandra takes a shot for eight points of damage. Well, now it's the question how fast can Cassandra reload? And the answer is hopefully fast enough. Moving in further. Yep, yet another thug. Moving in back. By the way, I gave her the wrong other weapon. She should have had the repeater. It's fine. Most of the time we're going to use the weapon and uh, this weapon anyways. So that's four down. Can't really get inside of this room here, can we? Switching to the revolver. Cassandra couldn't help but notice all the protector's sophisticated machinery. Door is closed, door is also closed.
Moving in to get the key. Cassandra could now free her companions. All right, we got a key, but we did not get the keys to the prison here. Nope, can't open the doors. Luckily, Cassandra can run quite a bit. And with our companions together, uh, this here might be an easier endeavor. Cassandra is moving through the windows, has the height advantage, and now it's time to take revenge. Okay. So, I think that the enemy is like inside of the building. That's okay. I think Cassandra here in half cover is fine. She has better shooting angles. I kind of doubt that we're going to find so many enemies down there. I might be completely wrong. But it it looks like as if she could almost solo this mission. Getting our uh, getting our companions was optional. So we're moving in. Not seeing any enemies. That's a bit suspicious, to be honest. I mean, not a single one, right? Oh, wow. A single one. Good, so that's one down. Moving over here, let's open the door. Oh, the door is uh, is closed. Interesting. There might even maybe only be two enemies left. This here, however, is like. Strange. Why why are they popping out? We haven't even had a side. And Peiko I think has like give and take for, uh, 48 um, vision. So we should be able to see these guys easily.
Good, knowing that there seem to be more enemies. We're getting into a better cover spot. Reloading. Well, theoretically, there could be thugs in here as well. here just making sure at the moment that we that we have a decent sight on everything Okay. Ah, I forgot that uh, that side was closed. Okay, we haven't spotted any enemy. Let's move over here, which is a good cover position. So this is the end of the map. We're not going to see any more enemies from here. issue a short prayer a bit faster movement that's fine that's supposed to be the protector Protector claimed he was the only one who could lift Cassandra's curse. If she killed him, she would lose the opportunity. She told him she would take her chances. Yes, yeah, so what? I mean, are we going to kill him or are we not going to kill him?
Protector was gone, and so was his knowledge of how to use that machine. But Cassandra wasn't ready to give up that easily. She had the Protector's notes and documents, and all the time in the world. Several days later, Cassandra decided she was ready. Nightmares flooded her consciousness as exhaustion took its toll. Have Sandra uh, use the protector's machine. So are you telling me we could have we could have taken tactical positions, but everyone was just standing around the machine like a fool? There's the machine. Maybe demons are going to join us here. Let's use his mandrake root because I don't like him having only 11 uh, luck and maybe being in a flank position. That's never a good starting point. Moving in. Just in case something happens, I guess. Paco needs to stand like here. Oh wow, wait a second. We've just seen one, two, three, four, okay. Well, we know that there is something going to happen. Let's move Paco back. Opening the door. The room contained not only machinery, but also the protector's failed human experiments. There we go. The human experiments do not seem to be super scary.
Cassandra That's it? flipped the last lever and closed her eyes in anticipation. A short but excruciating moment later, her curse was lifted. She was finally free. Ooh. All right, guys. Whew. That was uh, the next scenario. We have missed one relic, but other than that, it was a perfect uh, run here. And that is it, I think, for the fourth scenario for us. We are more than halfway through the game. No, actually halfway through the game. And we're now going to follow the storyline of Warren, our initial protagonist, running another round with the devil. This here seems to be more like a side story. Probably mo uh, the, the normal way is you should follow Warren and then you can play the side story-ish. I don't know. Um, okay. So that is it. If you liked what you've seen, don't forget to comment down below and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much and see you in the next run. Bye bye.